Doing my usual reverb searches, I came across the ugliest thing to ever come out of the custom shop. Welcome back, troglodytes, to your daily dose of guitar information, the Troglies Guitar Show. Alright, so normally I like to stay positive on my show, but this has to be the worst Les Paul that I have ever seen. So it's a Gibson Murphy Lab reissue in the ultra light aged dark iced tea fade finish, which is a Chuck exclusive for the dealer Chuck Levins. And this is what it looks like. <laughs> it's like if you cover up this half of the guitar, it just looks like a normal dark burst. If you cover up the top, it just looks like a regular AFD style instrument. But it's such an abrupt cutoff, it's ugly in my opinion. When I first saw these things get introduced, I thought they were Epiphones, and I was like, oh cool, new Epiphone color. Because that's kind of what the Epiphone moderns look like. They have that whole fade finish. They're kind of an acquired taste. Are they my favorite? No, but they work for some people. I believe the first time the Gibson family of brands used that finish was around 2018 with the High Performance Fade series. At the combination of the Zebra pickups, I was shocked when I found out it was a $7,500 custom shop. There's actually a really beautiful half and half done up like this, but unfortunately I couldn't find the photos again. But it's got like a really wide flame top, it's a little bit more of a reddish burst than this one. I'm sure somebody will know the one I'm talking about, because if you've seen it on Facebook groups, you never forget that one. But okay, maybe this one doesn't look as bad from a side angle shot. And here we can see some of the finish checking that they've got going on with a light aging. And the headstock still looks fine, but this is one of those guitars where if I was gifted it, I would probably have to have the top refinished if I wasn't just ironically enjoying it. But wow, okay, that's the first time I've seen that, an aged guitar where they age the medallions. But honestly, I'm kind of glad it is a thing because that would look strange just having a perfect medallion on an aged guitar. And hey, it's a decent weight, eight and a half pounds. So here's where more of the story comes into play. I thought, okay, it's an exclusive finish. These guys wanted it to look this way. But here's the thing. I don't think Chuck Levins actually wanted this finish this way. Because we also have this one. We have this one. We have that one. And this one. But they're all dark iced tea fade. Dark iced tea fade. Dark iced tea fade. Dark iced tea fade. These are all technically the exact same color from the custom shop. <laughs> Let's just say if I custom ordered one of these and I got this, I'd be very upset. If I got this, I'd be like, yeah. This looks fantastic in my eyes. It's a little bit more of a subtle fade and I just like wider flame top. You've got a little bit of a chevron flame going on here, ultra wide, and the colors just happen to work better together on this one. I actually really do enjoy that. So it's not that I just don't like this finish, it's just some of these turned out better than others, I guess. But here's our next one. All right, not the best, but as compared to the first one that we saw, it's got a little bit of a wider flame. So it's at this point in my thought process, is it really the flame top that transforms the look of these? Because this one's got a very abrupt stopping point as well. So maybe it's just the really thin pinstripey epiphone like top of this one that makes it so atrocious to me. But here's a couple of extra photos of this one looking okay. And then this one, I, I, I don't know what to tell you. <laughs> this is not the exact same finish because it has a border over the entire thing, but it is coated the same. But the neck pickup on this one does have a cover, so that makes it a little bit different from the others, but this just looks like any other Les Paul burst that we've seen. It's got a nice back to it, has a very modded out vibe. And then their final one. Again, it just comes down to the flame top. Like the side profile shot on this one is stellar, but do you like this finish? Do you agree with me that this is the ugliest thing to come out of the custom shop in a long time, whereas the other ones are, maybe you don't like the finish, but whatever. But holy cow! <laughs> the ugliest one is the most expensive! I didn't even notice that. Okay, it's got a $500 premium to it. But that's only because it's the only one that was aged. But for me, this one's definitely the winner. And maybe they all look better in person, who knows. But hey, that's not enough for a full episode. I've got a couple of other interesting ones that I've accrued over the past couple of weeks. So our next one in tonight's journey is this Gibson Showcase Edition SG. I've actually reviewed and documented one of these before, and it wasn't my favorite SG in the world, but the Showcase Edition is pretty cool because most of the models actually came stock with EMG pickups. And as far as I'm aware, I think they're one of the first Gibson guitars to come stock with them. They all came stock with a cool showcase edition certificate of authenticity and they made like 200 of each there's a really cool blue sg standard there's another red les paul custom and then you've got some more like designer super strat type things and then there's just a random p100 gold top that doesn't have the emgs there's also a white 335 yeah that's right 335 stock with emgs it's increasingly hard to find them in all original condition because a lot of times people will rip the emgs out because gibson purists hate emgs and just convert it into normal 
but this one showed up and I was like, yes, nice. Finding these in clean shape is very hard and this one still has the plastic over the pick guard. I wouldn't mind having a set of these in really clean condition, even though generally speaking, the showcase editions aren't all that popular. So I'd actually made this guy an offer. Unfortunately, it wasn't accepted and I did that right before I went to bed. So when I woke up and saw that it was declined, it's like, all right, let's take a look at it just to see, should I raise my offer a little bit on this one? So I got on my computer and started zooming in here. I mean, there's a little bit of finish checking right here and the description talks about other finish checking. I was uncertain if that meant there was stuff on the body or in bad positions like on the neck. But then I got to this photo and it's like, what? Who refrets a mint condition guitar? <laughs> So I had to reach out to the shop and be like, yeah, somebody's refretted that guitar. Did you know that? And they were a little bit shocked and puzzled by that as well. So unfortunately, what went from a okay price for a really clean condition one went to, huh, there might be more to the story on that one. But next up, we have a little shout out to Robert's Gear Locker over here on Reverb. He's been posting some really nice Les Pauls. I think he's helping a collector liquidate his collection or maybe he had purchased it and he's selling it. So he's calling this one a pink Les Paul classic with his description being rare pink Les Paul classic. The only blem preventing it from being mint condition is some hanger ash. Now, unfortunately, this guitar is not all original. So I feel he needs to add a little bit more to his description as far as what has been replaced. But it's also possible that he just doesn't know. But looking at our serial number, yes, that does indeed date tonight. 1994, but this color is actually called Trans Purple. This color originated in the 1990 Limited Colors collection, where one of the six guitars was a Trans Purple Les Paul standard, which just kind of looks like Barney. But the classics generally look even a little bit more pink, but that's just how it is. I know it looks pink and it probably is more of a pink, but they technically called it Trans Purple. You can actually see it right here in the model designation code TP. So putting that in his title might help him sell it, but here's the problem. These are Les Paul Platinum knobs. These didn't come out till the 2000s, so those are definitely replaced. I mean, they stand out at you. And most of these had uncovered pickups, so definitely would be wise to pop those pickups out to see what might be in there currently. Not that it isn't too hard to replace the pickups that came stock in here anyways. It's usually the 496R 500T set, but it is good for the buyer to know. But next up, we have this custom. This is a 2005 custom shop in Fire Mist. I'm not a big fan of Cherry Sunburst, but Fire Mist is a great color. Basically, instead of having the yellow border, it becomes a little bit more orange-like, and that just transforms the entire vibe. That was a very nice piece. That's the other reason why I wanted to point out his shop, because they were very fair prices. 4,000 for this, smack dead on for the condition. It wasn't overpriced, it was just a fair premium for that top. It might've even been possible to squeeze just a a little bit more money out of that one but i suppose it's probably missing the coa because that's the large coa era and unless you have that you really can't ask crazy premiums and okay i guess it's actually from 2007 there's a bit of a typo Continuing on in our journey, there is a Buckethead inspired 88 custom. So obviously I had to click on this because anything Buckethead is cool in my opinion, but to take an 80s Les Paul custom and rework it into this is crazy. Apparently it got sent down to historic makeovers and you can find it on their Instagram page or something. I, I didn't go that far into it. So if you are interested, please do verify it. But for me, I don't think the conversion turned out that great. The kill switch just looks so obnoxiously large on this one. And I think it's because they went for the larger style Sanwa when they needed to go for the smaller or it's because the buckethead body is so much bigger that it can accommodate it so it's kind of hard to tell just from these photos but it looks like they did a bit of an aging job they put gold fret wire on it they gave it a brand new fretboard with no inlays i'm kind of surprised they didn't try to make the headstock all whited out but maybe they were going for buckets like original because there are a few different iterations of his guitar before he got his signature one but it was fascinating at the end of the day to see this one out here. Although I think at that price tag, I'd rather just buy one of the real ones. And check out this dark tiger. Uh-oh. <laughs> <laughs> that reminds me of the YouTube scammer episode. They were calling it something like that. Congratulations, you won Dark Tiger. Now this model's called Dusk Tiger. It looks like that's a typo on their part because they do have it right down here. I get messages about these things all the time. I don't like this model at all. I had one once, it was the worst thing ever. But the top is kind of interesting because you don't see many Gibson Les Pauls looking like this. But this particular one doesn't have much of a dark border around it. It's like only right there. So that's why I wanted to briefly share this example that popped up. But this is part of Gibson's whole robot series. So after the infamous Firebird X, there were a few different iterations after that, like the Dusk Tiger and the LPX. That so far, uh, no nobody really seems to like these guitars all that much. Not even collectors, but who knows, maybe in 50 plus years that story might change. That's why I still hold on to my Firebird X prototype.
There was a pretty cool DC standard in the jalapeno burst, which is what made me click on it, but then I realized, oh, it's Reverb's garage sale. So whenever you buy Reverb's shipping protection and something goes wrong, if you've ever wanted to know where the stuff goes, it goes to their restock shop here and it just gets sold off as is. Like right here is a completely headstock snapped off Adam Jones Les Paul standard. I think 2000 is a little bit of a reach, but that does look like a pretty easy repair, all things considered. Well, outside of the finished touch up you'll have to do. But anyways, the story of this one is it was lost in transit, but then they later found it. But probably after they had already paid out the insurance claim to the person who had sold it. So now they're selling it. In 1450, that, that's a pretty good price. I would suggest watching this shop because sometimes there are some good deals or you can make offers. But this is one of the more rare finish on the double cut standards. You don't see it every day, but by no means is this rare, rare, rare. Like you need to grab this particular one, not worry about condition. But that one's definitely been played. And then there was this thing by Oho Guitars. I've actually bought one or two things from him. But I clicked on this because that's such a nice example. Like I had forgotten they'd even made blue ones, but this one with the wood grain on top of it, I'm not a big fan of the ESLPs. They're a little bit too light and they kind of sound like banjos. I much prefer a Les Paul Florentine from the 90s. They look the same, but they're just completely differently constructed. But this denim blue finish is just Awesome. I love it. I wouldn't mind having that one in my collection as the representation of the ESLPs. But it's a little bit more than I want to pay, so I'll pass it on to you. Then we had a cool Class 5 quilt top. What on earth is a Class 5? Well, you could check out this episode to learn a little bit more about it, but it's just a really confusing model. It's just like a custom shop Les Paul standard. Every run has something a little bit different to it. They're not full-on reissues, but it's not a Gibson USA Les Paul. It's just somewhere right in between, but you can find some really nice tops on these. And this one, yeah, I'd say that's pretty nice. But then there's this Trad Pro 5 that somebody refinished in lime green sparkle metallic. It kind of looks like one of those mod collection guitars or a Dax & Co refinished job. Not my favorite color, but it is quite striking. And then lastly today, an awesome Sweetwater exclusive Smokehouse Burst Les Paul Classic. Trust me, these things look different all the time. It just depends who's painting them that day. But this one, the combination of the wood grain and the color hues, absolutely perfect. It looks like they've moved these into the new cases. Somebody's upgraded our tuners to locking ones, most likely. And it's got a couple of scratches, but even if you buy a brand new one, it's gonna have some of that too. But hey, you can actually get a discount on the used market. All right, troglodytes, I hope you enjoyed tonight's episode. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and we'll catch you tomorrow on the next one. Take care. If you enjoyed tonight's episode, consider subscribing. I post videos like this every day. And you might even enjoy this next one.